right, um, thanks for the opportunity to talk. I'm really excited to be here. Um, before I get started, I just want to thank all my collaborators, some of whom are here. Um, it's been a really struggle time working on this project with everyone. Um, so just to start a little bit of background about simulation-based medical education, or SBME. Um, we'll start off with the definition of what exactly simulation is. Um, and there's a bunch of uh, definitions out there, um, but the one that we thought was particularly uh, appropriate for our study was by Dr. David Gabba out of Stanford. Um, he's really a leader in the field of SBME. Um, and he defines simulation as a technique, um, not a technology, to replace or amplify real experiences uh, with guided experiences that evoke or replicate substantial aspects of the real world in a fully interactive manner. Um, and I know that I'm sort of kicking off the learning and technology part of the uh, talk today, but uh, there's an important distinction here, and that's simulation is not necessarily in, um, executed through a new technology. Um, it's very possible to use existing technologies or existing resources <coughs> to execute um, simulation, as we'll see uh, going forward. Uh, I also want to talk a little bit about how simulation-based education has been used in other um, contexts, both in the medical field um, and other uh, fields as well. Um, I think one example that we know a lot is aviation. Um, this is when uh, learners are, are using uh, flight simulators um, before they really go out into the real world. And this is particularly effective, I think, in this field because it's so high risk. Um, so we can't, really can't afford to make too many mistakes because um, the outcomes would be pretty devastating. Um, also very popular recently in medicine, um, I think particularly in the field of anesthesia and emergency medicine where there's a lot of procedural skills, um, and also those high risk uh, situations. So that picture is um, an example of uh, training for code um, with learners. Um, one last piece of background before we really uh, dive in. Um, you can sort of categorize SBME into eight different subtypes. Um, and this isn't universally accepted. Uh, hard to read up there. Um, this isn't really a universally accepted breakdown, but uh, one of the collaborators on our uh, study, Dr. Techian at the University of Illinois, sort of proposed these eight different subtypes. Um, the first type is called the park test trainers. And those are used to pr uh, teach procedural and technical skills. For example, that could be like this uh, mannequin over on the right that's used to teach you how to make a Next type is computer-based systems with mannequins, and this is when learners are um, sort of allowed to interact with uh, materials related to the basic sciences and get feedback on those. Um, the third type would be screen-based simulators, and that's sort of intuitive. That's when you have a desktop um, sort of screen that can simulate a virtual world. An example here um, over on the top right would be like a program for teaching neonatal resuscitation. Um, we also have virtual reality and haptic systems. This is when the learners get sort of haptic feedback and can learn a procedure in that way. An example here would be um, like a neurosurgical surgical trainee um, who's getting haptic feedback on what the surgery might feel like in real life. Um, also have integrated, sim integrated simulators uh, where you're combining the mannequins with a computer that controls the physiology of that mannequin and uh, can change the outputs. And then we also have simulated patients, uh, which are near and dear to my heart as a medical student right now. I need to interact with them a lot. Um, and that's when you just have an individual or an actor um, training to portray a particular clinical set of symptoms. Um, and one thing that I wanted to, uh, the reason I picked this picture is because I think one thing that you really, uh, is a strong point of simulated patients is you can go back and watch your interaction and you can work on your communication skills. And in the real world, it's not often easy to get that feedback. Um, and the last two are hybrid simulations um, in which you combine the SPs with the task trainers and simulated environments. Um, all right, so now going to our actual study. Um, the, through the systematic review of literature, our ultimate goal was to create a better understanding of how SBME is being used in radiation oncology. And through that, we were hoping to identify some gaps in its use and um, be able to guide educators on you know, what next steps we could take um, towards implementing SBME in the, in the field. Um, and ultimately, as you know, for every educational intervention, um, the goal is to get better trainees and ultimately um, lead to better um, outcomes for our patients. Um, so this is just a quick overlay, uh, overview of our methods. Um, we did the systematic review according to the PRISMA guidelines, and the inclusion criteria um, for our study was one that it had to be or meet the definition of simulation that I described earlier for David Gabba. Um, two, that it has to describe a current or theoretical educational intervention, and that it also has to be specific to the field. Um, and I realize now that you can't read that at all on the right. Um, that's just an overview of our protocol. Um, we started off our initial search yielded 471 unique citations. We had three independent reviews, uh, leading to 54 unique articles being included um, for our study. Um, and this is a summary table um, just of all the endpoints that we looked at. And I want to draw your attention to a few of them. Um, the one at the top, we had of the 54 studies, only nine actually self-identified as SBME or simulation-based medical education. Um, and then the target learners, um, the majority of them, it's 
probably hard to read up there, but 53% targeted resident physicians and 36% uh, targeted attending physicians with medical students coming in third and then the rest of the radiotherapy care team um, very significantly less. Um, the type of SVME from that table that I described earlier, um, by far the overwhelming majority was uh, the screen-based simulators accounting for 56% of the um, interventions. And similarly, um, those screen-based simulators were typically uh, used to teach contouring, um, which represented 54% of studies. We also looked at a, a diversity of different types of um, interventions, or um, there were a, a big diversity of interventions in our studies. We also looked at the, um, not only if, if learners were given feedback during, during these interventions, but what type of feedback was given. And um, fortunately, we actually found a big, di you know, a very large um, diversity in type of, of not only the interventions, but also the uh, type of feedback that was given as well. Um, and then lastly, we looked at the actual efficacy of these interventions and the reported outcomes, both objective measures and subjective, uh, subjective measures, as reported in, in the articles. And we found that pretty much regardless of the radiation oncology topic or the type of SPME, we were getting statistically significant positive learning outcomes. Um, <coughs> Um, so the big conclusions, uh, we, we actually found that SVME is rather prevalent um, in the field. The, the big issue is that it's not very um, often recognized as such by the people developing these interventions. Like I said, less than 20% of people that are developing SVME interventions don't, don't recognize it as such. Um, there's also a need to increase the diversity of our target learners. Like I said, it's, right now it's very heavily um, dependent or, or targeting our, our physician members of the team. Um, so there would be definitely a, a need to expand that to medical students, to symmetrists, radiation therapists, and um, et cetera. Um, and like I said before, um, right now, uh, the, the majority of our studies that we found, um, we're using uh, the screen-based simulators to teach contouring. Um, and that we also found that all these interventions, regardless of, of the setting, uh, appear to be um, efficacious. Um, some big takeaways that I want to uh, sort of get from this study. Um, number one is that uh, radiation oncology SVME is, is really an exciting opportunity um, for learners, exciting opportunity for educators, um, and the space to develop um, and innovate uh, is, is huge. Um, as our team sort of theorized some, some ways that we could incorporate SVME into further um, interventions or new interventions, and just like I talked in the beginning, um, SPMEs or simulation-based education has, has really taken off in those high-risk industries, so aviation, engineering. Um, so based on that, we can sort of apply that same type of thinking to radiation oncology and look at some of um, you know the, the cases that aren't often uh, experienced uh, frequently in clinical training. So the emergent on-call cases, the proton treatments, pediatric malignancies. Um, and we also hope that through this study we can, you know, start helping SBME gain recognition in the field, um, so we can consolidate our resources, pool our costs, and then hopefully encourage dissemination of these resources so that we can improve not only the competency of the learners but also uh, hopefully create better outcomes for our patients. Um, with that, I just want to thank you all again, um, everybody here in the ROAC, CSG for being on this great event. So.